noticed during your keynote presentation, which by the way was standing room only, absolutely packed, you actually had a couple of companies that you use as examples. So I'm assuming that you like uh, these companies for maybe not necessarily their stock value, but you like how they're setting up in terms of tonnage and, uh, and their resources. Is that why you're highlighting them in your, in your presentation? Yeah, they were two good examples of uh, sort of two, uh, two extremes. Uh, in the case of Avalon, they already have a, a 60, 70 million ton resource estimate with several key zones mapped out of different cutoffs, and they are at the advanced stage of doing doing metallurgy. So I showed that so people can see, well, here's $15 billion in the ground. Now the question is, what's the cost of getting this out, and who's going to buy this asset in order to control the supply? The other company was Ucor Uranium, which owns a project in Alaska, which the USGS, during the 80s, when they were freaked out about where the Cold War was going right. to end up, uh, were doing strategic studies funded by taxpayer money to see what sort of rare earth resources existed on their soil. So they mapped out this per alkaline complex of uh, Volcan Mountain and these dike structures that radiate off what we did sort of back of the napkin type calculations, estimating that there's 30 to 40 million tons of heavy uh, rare earth enriched uh, stuff there. So these guys are now in the process of drilling off the stuff. There's no, there's no three-dimensional footprint yet available because it's never been drilled. But from the understanding of the structure, we can see, okay, there's going to be a significant resource here. When you get the channel sample and the odd intersection that I caught up with, in this case, is a very high sample of $3,000 ton, I and mean, that's off the scale rock value. But that is not what a 10 million ton resource is going to be. The next step will be for them guys to see what does it all average out, and, uh, and, 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 and what minerals are there that can be, that contain the stuff that can be properly processed. Now, you haven't asked me this, but I'm, I'm going to say it regardless that I've always liked the fact that every time I come to these conferences, you seem to provide the most independent uh, non-biased kind of information. So I know a lot of our viewers feel the same way. How do they keep up with your uh, with your conversations and, and your ideas on rare earths going forward? Uh, where do they go in order to keep up with this and not, not have this as a one-time shot, but continue to, to hear your thoughts for weeks, months, years to come, perhaps? Well, on my website, on my homepage, in fact, right there's a link to a free rare earth resource center. It has links to other resources online. It has links to free stuff. It also has links to all my rare stuff that's restricted. We are a subscription-based service. It's a hundred dollars of uh, one month trial to get access to everything, the commentaries and information system. And it's a eight hundred dollars a year US. Uh, well, given the fact that uh, you're almost the father of rare metals right now, the one who really brought it before, and a lot of investors done very well, I think it's uh, it's probably money well spent, and I've got no. I've got no conflict here. We're not partners of any kind. I just think you've always provided people with great objective information, and I think that's on the price. So, John, really big thanks. Given how back, given the fact how busy you are at these conferences, a real big appreciation that you made the time over here to, uh, to speak to our investors. Yeah, thank you, George, for having me on the air here. This has been uh, George Scholes and John Kaiser from the floor of the, of the Cambridge Conference at the Convention Center in Toronto. And for more information, make sure, make sure you get yourself over to John's website. And until next time, have a great day.